So when it comes to learning chords as a guitarist and reading music, there's two types of diagrams you should be familiar with, right? One of them are chord charts, right? They're sort of fretboard diagram maps of usually the first few frets of the guitar. They show us six strings going up and down and they use dots to tell us where to push our fingers. And then the other form I wanna tell you about is tabs. Tabs have six lines going left to right and they use numbers written on each line to tell you which fret you're gonna put your fingers on. Now, both of these are different. There's places where I like to use one more than the other. For example, with tabs, you're able to be a bit more specific and prescriptive about which exact strings you're playing. So maybe you want to show that you strum the bass note of a chord and then you strum it a few times. Or maybe there's a lick that you play leading into a chord or just after a chord. Tabs are great for that, right? Now, chord charts, on the other hand, there's a real directness of the information. If you think about it, there's no letters or numbers involved. So you can just look at them and spatially, the way things are laid out, you know, the dots representing your fingers, you can sort of understand where you put your fingers. And even if you were playing guitar with someone who didn't speak the same language as you, or you couldn't even talk to each other, you could sort of show them a chord chart. And if they knew how a guitar worked, they could probably discern, oh, that's where I put my fingers. So there's a real sort of efficiency there. I'll use those as well. Sometimes I'll combine the two, tabs and chord charts together. Now, if you are struggling with either of these, I made a free PDF cheat sheet. It's available in the link of this video, or you just head over to songnotes.net, you'll see it there. And what this is going to do, this cheat sheet, it's going to show you the most common chords in open position, right? Major and minor chords. I'll throw a few bar chords in there as well. And for each chord, it's going to show you the chord chart and the guitar tab. And they're right next to each other. So it's a great way to use what you know, even if you just know the chords by muscle memory and you don't know how to read chord charts or tabs, you can sort of understand, okay, this is a C, I look at the chord chart, I look at the tab, and you're sort of able to glance between both and connect the dots. I trust you'll be able to see the patterns there. Now, I'll explain how to read these really quick in this video, but a really quick plug while I have you here is a new course I just released. It's called Reading Music for Guitarists. It talks about tabs, chord charts, strumming patterns, chord progressions, fretboard diagrams, and even how to read my song sheets which combine all these things together, right, into a single package. And as a modern guitarist with the web, there's so much great stuff on there, whether it's web pages or websites or YouTube for tutorials, right? But there is some degree of understanding how to read music as a guitarist you need to know. So this course has you covered. Each of those topics has its own video. I spend a slow, careful, sort of patient a walkthrough going through each of these topics. There's a web page component if you prefer that style with a bunch of images. And there's also a downloadable PDF for each topic. So that's available at songnotes.net. Check it out. And I have some other courses as well. Practical Music Theory, my beginner chord guide, a lot of overlap with this topic there. That's all there waiting for you. I just had to plug that because I spent a long time working on it the last few weeks. A lot of you have asked for it and I'm happy to finally have it ready. But let's get back to chord charts and tabs. I'll explain how to read these, all right? Now, chord charts, again, they're defined by the six lines. The key thing to remember here is that the far left line is gonna represent your thickest string, okay? So the low E string, in this case, is represented by the far left line that's going up and down. And likewise, the far right line represents the thinnest string, okay? Now the horizontal rows, they represent the frets of the guitar. So usually you're just gonna need about three frets worth or three rows worth, right? And the idea is we're gonna put dots on top of the strings in certain rows and that just tells you basically where to position your hands to play a chord. So this is a C chord, this is a G chord, this is a D chord. I'll get into the details in one second here, but let's look really quick at tabs. Now tabs, the way they work, again, thickest string is on the bottom. This is one of the most important things you want to understand, right? If you have it reversed, it can really confuse you. So the convention is you look at guitar magazines, you look at books, you look at uh, other teachers online, 99.9% .9 of them are going to write the thickest string on the bottom, the thinnest string on top. And then you use numbers written on each string to denote the fret you put your fingers on. So a C major is going to look like this, a G major. Again, I'll talk about these a bit slower in one second. But the main idea is the numbers are gonna be stacked on top of each other. And all that means is you're gonna play them all at the same time. You see guitar tabs, the way they work is you'll read them from left to right. And sometimes you'll encounter, you know, a lick or a riff. And the main idea is as you read from left to right, you read all the strings at the same time. If you see one number or you see multiple numbers, you play those frets on the matching strings, okay? So that's how you read guitar tabs. Now, let's look at some chords here and sort of walk through uh, some of the, the, the nuances here. Okay, so for the G major chord, for example, here's the chord chart, here's the tab. Okay, looking at the chord chart, you'll see on the far left line, the third fret 
is where the dot is, right? And the fifth string is the second fret. And then you see these three circle donut looking things, right? That's gonna be what we call an O for open. You leave that string open. That's the way I like to think about it at least. So third, second, open, 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 and then third on the far right string. So that's a G major chord. Now in tab form, okay, read it again from bottom to top, right? Bottom is our thickest string. Third fret, second fret, open, 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 third. Now if you strummed it, right, you're sort of playing them all at once, right? So the important part, whether you're looking at chord charts or tabs, when it's a chord, the assumption is you're playing all the strings at the same time. Sure, later on we can get into alternating bass notes and all that kind of stuff where you're sort of, there is a bit more of a sequencing of things involved, but that's a separate topic. So that's the G chord. Let's look at a few other chords here to teach you some of the must know symbols. If you look at this one, do you know what chord this is? This is a C major chord, okay? Now, what is that X in the chord chart right here? The X tells us we don't play that string, okay? So in the C major chord, looking at the chord chart, going from left to right, starting on the fifth string, we have third fret, second fret, open, first, open, okay? The same chord written as a tab, it's starting on the fifth string. Remember, we're going from bottom to top. So that fifth string down, right, is gonna be third, second, open, first, open, okay? And again, if me saying fifth string confuses you, uh, it's really important you understand, and I cover this in my course that I mentioned, the Reading Music for Guitarists on the tab section, it's vital you understand when people say first string, they're talking about the thinnest string. And when they say sixth string, they're talking about the thickest string, okay? So you wanna keep that in mind. It's one of those confusing things, but it's helpful just to commit it to memory because it is indeed a convention you'll find across most, most, most teachers you learn from. Now, one other chord I wanna show you here to teach you some other stuff is a bar chord. Let's look at this B minor. Okay, there's a couple things going on here, right? Number one, in the chord chart, you see the two, three, four? written on the far left there. Do you have any idea what that means? So that's telling us that we are uh, not in the first three frets. Again, if you look at the chord charts that are showing you stuff in the first three frets, you're gonna see that nut, right? That, that thick line at the very top. That's this part of the guitar. But if you don't see that, you're usually, I mean, hopefully always, gonna see numbers written next to the frets. That's gonna tell you which frets you're playing. So here, right, I'm playing second, fourth, fourth, third, second on the thinnest five strings. I'm starting on the fifth string, and those are the frets I'm playing, right? This is a B minor shape, right? Now, if we looked at it on a tab, we would strum from bottom to top, but see how the sixth string has nothing written on it? So we don't even play the sixth string. We just start on the fifth string, right? The A string, second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, third, second, right? And that's a B minor chord. Now, the other thing going on here is you see in the B minor in the chord chart, there's that thick line. That represents a, a fret that we're barring, okay? Barring means you're pushing down multiple strings on the same fret with one finger. Now, bar chords are an incredibly uh, tough thing when you're first starting guitar, right? But the main idea here is see how this fifth, fifth string and first string notes, right? There's that line going. That means that the same finger is gonna play them. Now, for this particular shape of bar chord, we're gonna use our index finger, right? And you play second, fourth, fourth, third, second. And again, it's the index finger. It's that one finger that is playing both of those notes. Now, if you need help with bar chords, I have a bunch of lessons on my website that includes, you know, the most common bar chords you'll run into, a bunch of like alternatives for bar chords, as well as a strength training, right? Part of bar chords is not just the information. It's not just learning where do I put my fingers. It's building up the muscle memory and sort of learning the sort of angle to put your finger. With practice, you will get it. I remember when I started to learn them, I felt like I would never, ever, ever get them. It felt impossible. But with practice and persistence, you will get there, okay? So that's all you need to know, big picture, for tabs and chord charts, okay? And then again, in the free PDF I made, go get it. You just click the button, it downloads right away. Again, I'll show you the chord chart and tabs for those chords next to each other. So you can just sort of glance back and forth, okay? So that's available for you. Um, if you want more on these topics, especially on tabs, check out my course, Reading Music for Guitarists, because tabs can be used to show you licks and riffs. They can combine individual notes with chords. There's bends and hammer-ons and slides, all kinds of additional things you can do with guitar tabs. 
I talk about that in the Reading Music for Guitars course for tabs. And again, there's a PDF. It's multiple pages for tabs. It sort of shows you a visual, print it out, and keep it forever. Okay? Um, final plug as well for my Practical Music Theory course and my Beginner Chord Guide. The Chord Guide has tons of videos. It shows you these same chords I'm teaching you here. But for each chord, it shows you other chords to practice with it, right? So if you're learning C, I'll talk about learning, you know, F over C and this version of G and, you know... little bits of flourish you can do for each chord. I'll show you ways you can sort of put ornaments and flair on there to make it stand out and sound really cool. So that's available for you. Songnotes.net, y'all. This is going to be the end of this video. Uh, hope you found this helpful. Get that free cheat sheet, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, my friends, take care, and bye-bye.